Can I invite you to stand? We're going to sing our first hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine. to the third Sunday of Epiphany and that song with its emphasis on light picks up the theme which runs right through the season of Epiphany. It's the light of Christ coming into the world and we get a sense of that in our Gospel reading and through our readings today of how that light can come through Christ. So let's be conscious of that as we come to the readings and it's a light that lights the nations of the world. Let us pray. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. Let us pray. We gather, we gather in this space, made, made beautiful, beautiful by, by your presence, presence God's, God's Spirit, and, and by, by the, the spirit, spirit of love in our community. community. In this place, we hold the beauty of God. We, we sing of this beauty with our voices, 
and with our hearts, with our whole being, we respond more deeply to the sacred call to be all that we are. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Confession and absolution. Jesus proclaimed, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Let us confess our sins in penance and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Lord, we have sinned and individually and as a nation, in thought, word and deed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We are truly sorry and we ask you to forgive us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Help us by your spirit to live in newness of life and as a nation to be a blessing to all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we stand in response to that absolution and sing our hymn of praise? to God in heaven, peace to those who love us pray the prayer of the day. Loving God, the light of minds that know you, the life of the souls that love you, and the strength of the hearts that serve you, help us so to know you that we may truly love you, and so to love you that we may faithfully serve you, whose service is perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for Australia Day. Let us pray. Bountiful God, we thank you for this ancient and beautiful land, a land of despair and hope, a land of wealth and abundant harvests, a land of fire, drought and flood. We pray that your spirit may continue to move in this land and bring forgiveness, reconciliation, and an end to all injustice, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'd like to be seated, Melian, would you like to come out of the front? Where is she going? You going to come for a children's talk, Melian? That's the way. So, Melian, do you like playing sport? Yeah, what... 
games and sport do you like? Do you like cricket? No. <laughs> what about soccer? No. Basketball? Ice skating? Oh, okay. So when you go ice skating, do you kind of do that all by yourself or do you have a team of people? Yeah? You're all by yourself? You have a team of people, okay. So in the gospel today, Jesus is calling a bit of a team, not for ice skating. I don't know if he could even imagine an ice skating ring. It would be very strange in that part of the world, even today, I expect. But Jesus wanted to call a team together. The thing I like about team sports is that it actually makes you think about where the other person is in the team and what their gifts and their skills are. Are you a good ice skater, Melia? Yeah? Okay. Sounds like you would run rings around me if I was on the other team. I would be falling over more than standing up on my skates, I think, and usually then complaining about the injuries. So, so you know, ice skating, is that... So do you have, like, a puck or something that you try and hit into a net? What, how do you play in it? team with ice skating? You do dances together. Oh, wow, okay. So, so you all have to do the same thing at the same time when you're doing a dance together? Right. So it's not a team like a sports team, but it's a team where you're all working together and doing the same thing and somebody's perhaps a leader, and others are all then following the leader. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of sports, there's that sense of working together and supporting each other. Yeah. And so in the team that Jesus was calling, he was calling his team to be disciples and to work together. <coughs> but by the time St. Paul was writing to the Corinthians, he was thinking, you guys look like the worst team I've ever seen. You're always fighting. You're always saying, oh, our mob's better over here and we do this thing better over this way. And you guys need to listen to us rather than working as a team. It's like they're playing cricket, but they can't agree on who's bowling. They can't agree on who's going to be fielding. They can't agree on anything. And so St. Paul tells them, it's time you guys really became a real team and stopped fighting. It's a bit hard for you if you were doing ice skating and dancing if you all couldn't agree on which song you were going to be dancing to or which, how, which moves you're going to do, wouldn't it? You'd all be doing your own things. That would look a bit strange. So Jesus invites people to be part of his team. St Paul tells them you need to pay attention to each other and care for each other. And he was really talking about the church. He wasn't talking about ice skating either. <coughs> and so they were saying, as a church, we need to look out for one another and support those who are doing great work and work alongside of them. So when, we're, when you're doing your ice skating in your dance group and whatever, you, you can be thinking maybe the church can be moving more together as well functioning more like an ice skating dance group and maybe or like a football team that actually moving all in the one direction. I know when sometimes you watch little kids playing football, the kids get confused and start running the wrong direction and that's a bit, a bit funny from a spectator's point of view but from the team's perspective it's not very funny at all and St Paul seemed to think half the people in Corinth the Christian church there were running the wrong direction rather than working as a team. So let's give thanks that we can have all sorts of different sports in this country and that I can choose cycling and, and swimming rather than ice skating and you can do things that you like. Lord Jesus, we give thanks for this great nation of Australia and all the wonderful sports, the team sports, 
but also the individual sports. And Lord, we pray that our nation can be blessed by the sports that we play, but also, Lord, we pray that the churches in Australia can work together as teams, bringing the ministry of the gospel to this nation. Lord Jesus, we make this prayer in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, you might like to grab some of the sheets that are down the back there and perhaps rather than do the picture on the front, turn them over and draw a picture of you doing ice skating in your team or something like that, I don't know. Or maybe the, uh, a team of disciples working together, you might want to imagine what that would look like. But I, I'll be looking forward to seeing what you draw or how you might imagine that team. And let's remain seated for our Australia Day psalm. Thanks, Rod. The Australia Day psalm based on Psalm 136. Give thanks to the source of all goodness, the true God of all gods, whose love endures forever. Thank the rulers of all rulers, who alone achieves the impossible. God's love endures forever. God's wisdom made boundless galaxies and placed this planet in orbit, giving us lights to order our lives, by day the sun, moon and stars by night. God's love endures forever. Oppressors God has punished, Pharaoh of old and Hitler in our age. Faithful people have been treasured, Moses, Mary, Cranmer, King and Teresa. God's love endures forever. God sailed with the convicts of Botany Bay, brought down unscrupulous governors, led settlers through alien bush and gave freedom to prisoners. God's love endures forever. God grieved for the displaced Aborigines and was angry with those who slaughtered them. Yet when our land was under attack, God remembered us and rescued us from those who sought to invade us. God's love endures forever. Nor does God forget the wild creatures, platypus and pelican eat well. There is grass for the wallaroo and seed for lorikeets. The marsupial mouse and echidna are well fed. God's love endures forever. I give thanks to God, all living things. Let all the people of Australia say it. Let all members of the church shout it. Let all the children of God sing it. God's love endures forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 10. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptised in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptised none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say you are baptised in my name. I did baptise also the household of Stephanus, Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptised anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptise, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with elegant wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and sing our gradual hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Your eyes 
upon Jesus. Look full in His The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 4, beginning at verse 12. Glory to you, Lord Jesus when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. So that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, on the road by the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. 
the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light, was, light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went through the Galilee, teaching in their synagogue and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the gospel of Lord Jesus. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to hear the invitation that your Son brings to us in Jesus Christ, that invitation to the light, the invitation to be part of his community, bringing light to others. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'd like to be seated. In that gospel reading, we heard that Matthew, uh, Jesus quoting from Isaiah, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. For those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. So over, over these past few weeks, I've spoken of light and how that's the whole point of the season of Epiphany. It's about light that reveals Christ Jesus. It's even more evident this week. One of the scholars I read says, the message from Isaiah is this, a light is piercing the darkness and always has been. That light liberates us from oppressors in many times and places. That light is not only a foretold child, because that's what Isaiah 9 goes on to talk about, that light is Emmanuel. The message of Isaiah chapter 9 is a reminder that God is always with us. So, last week it wasn't quite so evident that the Gospel reading was about light. We didn't have a direct quote from Isaiah. What happened was that John the Baptist spoke of the revelation he experienced on baptising Jesus and how he saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove. For him, that was a light that had been turned on, if you like, in the darkness, the darkness of sin that he saw all around him. Even though a great light is mentioned here, it's not evident to us why this region the region of Naphtali and Zebulun should be a land of darkness. These are the two of the sons of the, the 12 sons of Jacob, hence two of the tribes of Israel. And they were tribes that lived in that northern part of Israel, up around Lake Galilee. The northern part of Israel, right back in the 8th century, had the 8th century BC, that is, had been conquered by the Assyrians. The southern part was able to hold on for another couple of centuries until the Babylonians came and conquered them and sent them off into exile. 
but this passage from Isaiah was written in that kind of in-between time. So they looked upon the north of Israel as a place of darkness because of the invasion of the Assyrians. But at the time of Jesus, of course, it wasn't the Assyrians or the Babylonians. It was the Roman Empire that had conquered the whole land of Israel. The darkness that overshadowed the, that whole land was because they put in place three puppet rulers. And we met the father of those rulers in chapter one of Matthew. And of course, in our minds, he's the one that the wise magi go to, seeking this newborn king. And the one, he's the king who sends his soldiers to go and slaughter all the children so he can make sure that that child is dead. Now, we've just heard of John the Baptist being arrested, and in the back of our minds we think, you know, that's not good for John the Baptist because we know what's coming. He's eventually put to death by this king. And it's also King Herod, the son of the other King Herod. So while... There's a darkness that shadows over the whole of Israel, perhaps this northern part of, of Israel where this particular king, King Herod, is the reigning, is the darkest shadow. As I said, the, the scholar I quoted said, the message from Isaiah is this, a light is piercing the darkness and always has been. Back in the 8th century, the 6th century and in that first century as it is now. So as we come to Australia Day this week, we're hard pressed to see Australia, it seems to me anyway, as a land of darkness. In many ways, when you look outside today, it's bathed in light, but it's bathed in light in all sorts of different ways. We have a health system that's probably in the top 10 in the world. We have one of the most stable and perhaps one of the oldest democracies in the world. We have an education system which is available to all people. That's fantastic. Boys and girls can go to school. They can go to school for free right up to year 12. It's a bit more challenging after that. But as, even as I mention these things, and no doubt all of you if you stop and think about it, can name lots of other things that you think make Australia shine as a great nation, as a wonderful nation. But each time you mention those things in your mind, you're probably also thinking, well, there's this problem with the democracy, there's this problem with our education system, something else with our health system. We can all find things that need improving. Some of the things that need improving cast a very deep, dark shadow over our land. In spite of having a great health system, care of people struggling with mental illness is underfunded. As a consequence, an overnumbering people struggling in that way end up in our prisons and their mental health deteriorates in prison. In spite of having a democracy, it's a democracy that has its roots started with wealthy white men who effectively excluded women and just ignored and failed to recognise the indigenous people of the land. The light that we Christians can bring to these areas of darkness is, for instance, in democracy, to celebrate the contribution that women make as leaders in our nation in a whole range of different areas. And we can encourage them to participate more in the governance of our nation. We can also work towards real recognition of our First Nations people. And that the beauty of our democracy is the, the ex, this expression of recognition can be explored by open dialogue in our country. 
and we'll all get to have our two bobs worth at the referendum that comes. However, I guess darkness for many of us has a more personal dimension to it. How have you experienced darkness in your life? For some, it's sickness and pain that just overshadows and overwhelms. For others, it's a breakdown in relationships, They're no longer talking to their daughter or their wife or whoever it might be that was a close relative. For others, it might be an addiction of one kind or another that drags them down. What light, if any, pierces the darkness? And when you're in the darkness, it's hard to even see the light. I wonder if we as Christians can bring light to other people's lives by taking time to be a friend, to truly listen to them in that space. Sometimes just to sit with them in their grief, their pain, their deep sadness. Maybe words of encouragement from the scriptures or somewhere else in our tradition will bubble to the surface in our mind and maybe that'll help. But often it's just that willingness to be present, to be with them in the darkness. That in itself can bring light and hope. Jesus invited those disciples to join him on a mission, a mission to bring light into the world. It wasn't just Peter and Andrew and James and John, all the other disciples there that he called. It includes us. Jesus is calling each one of us to be a part of this great work. And sometimes it's difficult to know exactly what we can do and for our nation, for our community, and for our family, wherever we see darkness. But let's invite the Holy Spirit to lead us into that darkness so that we can bring light. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and together affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God who made and loves all that is. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born, lived, died and rose again and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit who calls, equips and sends out God's people and brings all things to their true end. This is our faith, the faith of the church. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. We bless you, God of the universe, for this land, for its contrasts of landscape and climate.
for its abundance of wealth and opportunity. Lord, in your mercy, Pray. on this Australia Day, we bless you for our history with all its struggles in adversity, its courage and hope. Give us in our diversity, tolerance and respect for each other and a passionate commitment to justice for all. Bless us so that we might be a blessing to others and live in appreciations of all that the First Nations people have done for this land. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father God, we also pray for the many countries suffering from various disasters. The war in Ukraine that has resulted in a large-scale displacement crisis. Somalia's catastrophic hunger crisis. Ethiopia's drought and conflicts that have tormented tens of thousands of people. The gang violence in places like Haiti and in the and in, in the crisis in countries like Afghanistan, Yemen, Sudan, Syria, and even Sri Lanka, where the people are pushed into poverty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh God, we pray strongly for our troubled world and ask that all people might work together to bring an end to the suffering caused by war, injustice, disease, and poverty. We also pray for those whose lives are being affected by global warming and climate change, both here in Australia and in the wider world. Strengthen them in their hour of need and grant them perseverance and courage to face the future and be to them a firm foundation in which to rebuild their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you praise, O God, for everything that is new and beautiful, for everything which holds promise and brings us joy, for the children of this land and elsewhere Starting a new school year tomorrow, Heavenly Father, show the children the right part this school year. May they seek your purposes in all things. Guide their choices and give strength, knowledge, good health and dedication to also their teachers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, as we pray for all those who are ill in body, mind, and spirit, we ask that you may comfort and strengthen them through their illness. We pray also for those who care for the sick, especially those in the caring professions, as many of them may be struggling with tiredness, overwork, and the pressures of the rising cost of living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish, for strength, wisdom, good health, and direction to our wicker Father Nicholas and to all those who are working for the life of this parish. Whilst we thank you for the unstinting dedication we enjoyed thus far from our treasure, Gordon, we pray that you help us find a replacement soon so we can afford a peaceful and thankful send-off worthy of all that he has done for this parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we give thanks again for this ancient and beautiful land, a land of despair and hope, a land of wealth and abundant harvests, a land of fire, drought, and flood, we pray that your spirit may continue to move in this land and bring forgiveness, reconciliation, and an end to all injustice. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that, that we what you have asked in faith, 
we may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we stand for the greeting of peace? We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's greet one another with a COVID safe greeting. Jesus calls us to follow. Our hearts say, 
Come on, let's go. Lord Jesus, may these things of bread and wine and money express tangibly our readiness to follow you, our willingness to serve. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. All oh, glory and honour be yours, now and always, mighty creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. You anointed him as Messiah, the light of the nations, and revealed him as the hope of all who thirst for righteousness and peace. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And now we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. May we who receive them, as Jesus said, share his body and his blood. From the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. He blessed it and gave it to his friends and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He shared the cup with them and said, This is my blood poured out so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us. By your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people to the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. We all share in the one bread. Draw near with faith to feed on Christ in your hearts with thanksgiving. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, 
grant us your peace. And see the body of Christ keeping eternal life. And the body of Christ keep it eternal life. Amen. <coughs> Blood of Christ keep it eternal life.
Let us pray. God of the nations, we thank you for nourishing us with this holy sacrament. Guide us by your presence, that we may bring your light to those who dwell in darkness and establish your justice in all the earth. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. I'm conscious of two birthdays coming up. Um, young Will's got a birthday coming up this week, so if you'd... Tomorrow. So if you could pass on our greetings. How old's Will now? Uh, he's 17. 17, goodness me. So has he got his driver's licence? We are up to about 45 hours. 45 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the community can help with hours and driving. It's a hundred hours of a fair swag. Yeah, you have to have a big road trip to Adelaide or somewhere. <laughs> okay. And Constance has a birthday this week. The day after, I think, on Tuesday must be, is it? Yeah. Day to Constance. Has anyone else here got a birthday that we're not working? Okay, let's sing happy birthday to Constance and our will via Chris. I don't think there are any anniversaries, none that we're aware of. Yes, Michael. She's put up with you for seven, whole seven years. Well done. So congratulations and only 70 more to go, Sandra. Okay. You don't think so? Oh, well. Okay. Um, there are other things that we want to celebrate that God is doing in your life that you're particularly conscious of. Uh, yes. I just wanted to say two things. Could um, you pull the microphone a bit closer? I'll try not to break it as well. Um, I just wanted to say two things. One is a plea for help with the World Day of Prayer coming up. I have got two lovely helpers already, but I would really love some more people who could help, if possible. I need somebody to help on the door to welcome people in and just to make sure they're all all right. Um, I think I've got enough people to take part in the service, but I would also love for people to be able to help with the refreshments afterwards, please. Um, Narelle and Diana are coordinating all of that, but they cannot do all of the baking and all of the preparation of food and all of the washing up and everything else on their own. So any help, that would be absolutely fantastic and is much needed, and please talk to either of them about it. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, I, I don't know about any of you, but sometimes I come to church and we sing a song that I don't know or I don't know part of it. And so today, I didn't know that part, of, I know Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, but I didn't know that bit in the middle and it seems that a lot of us didn't know because the singing went right down then. You didn't know it. Yeah, that's right. And at first I started to get quite grumpy and I thought, oh, you know, it's her fault, it's his fault, it's their fault that we don't know this song and why are we singing things that we don't know? And I stopped because I really felt that I was being nudged to say, stop being grumpy, look at the words. You don't have to sing the words out loud. So the words, isn't he beautiful, outshining sun and stars? 
It's indescribable how breathtaking you are. And then the second time, you are so beautiful, God. Outshining sun and stars, it's indescribable how breathtaking you are. And when I stopped and thought of that, I thought, oh, wow, I can turn my grumps into praise instead of just being grumpy and blaming <laughs> everybody else because it's always their fault, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> it's never my fault. So praise God that he is so beautiful. Thank you. Isn't that why we have cats and dogs so we can blame them for all the things yes. that go wrong? <laughs> okay. Coming up in February, I know that seems like a long way away, but it's, it's only a month away, um, we've got our AGM, and during that week before and that day, we have, um, we're thinking about renewing our covenant. It's a kind of really a Methodist tradition, but I quite like it because it reminds us not just to have a personal commitment to God ourselves, but it actually reminds us to commit to this community of faith as well and to see that both in terms of our relationship with God, in terms of our care for this community, in what can we do in terms of our, our gifts, using our gifts and our talents and, and, and our finances, but also thinking beyond that to the greater and wider mission of the church. But... Just to be a part of that, there are, for the AGM, nomination forms available. Um, I've kind of stuck them under one of the folders out there so they wouldn't blow away. Not that there's much breeze at the moment. Um, but anyway, if you'd like to nominate someone for parish council, there's all sorts of positions open. Uh, this year we elect our synod reps for the next three years. Uh, this year... Well, we always need church wardens and uh, parish councillors and parochial nominators. So we're looking for all of those people to, to come forward. So it would be great to bring them onto this particular team of the kingdom of God. Okay. Um, we're, I'm hoping we can have, rather than just morning tea, a, a bit of a brunch or something after that to make it a real celebration. There will be morning tea after this service and you're all welcome to stay and be a part of that. Except, of course, for those who are joining us at home from via YouTube and it's great to have you with us and hopefully something of the light of Christ shines via YouTube. I've, I know that there are times when you perhaps think oh, it would be great to be able to receive communion and be a part of that community and I guess the darkness that many people sense is the darkness of COVID which overshadows us for this last three years. Okay. The other things that we need to announce or share or talk about, in which case let's stand for our final blessing and our dismissal. And now may Christ the Son of God be manifest to you that your lives may be a light to the world and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go, share the light that is within. Take healing and peace. Be a blessing to the people of Australia and to all peoples. In the name of Christ. Of Christ. Amen. Let's sing our final hymn for today, picking up from that gospel reading, I have decided to follow Jesus. And I just might warn people that there is a section there that you won't know. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy the words and don't be grumpy. It's not that hard to pick up. Just have a listen the first time and then join in as you can. Why don't you sing that portion for us?
you Cause you gave yourself for me And I, my life for you Cause you gave your life for me Okay, let's go back to the beginning. I have decided to follow Jesus.